when it comes to horse racing sponsorship, there are three names that stick out head and shoulders above the rest in terms of time span. And I refer in particular to Rothmans, Vodacom and J&B. There have been many other sponsorships that have come to pass in the last decade or so, not least of all the Lormorans Queen's Plate. But the Summer Cup has been devoid of great sponsorship for various different reasons, but still remains Gauteng's most prestigious race. We're going to have a chat to Mike de Kock, who is the winning most trainer as far as the Summer Cup is concerned. Some people will tell you that he's won seven. Some people will tell you that he's won nine and that he's looking for his tenth. But whatever the case may be, there are great horses like Evening Mist and Illa de Vittoria and Flirtation and Wolf Whistle and Ingleside and Delta Form along the way that make out this wonderful entourage of Mike de Kock's winning horses. And we are now going to catch up with Mike and take him back to 1989 when he was victorious with Evening Mist. You know, she was obviously a super filly, Evening Mist. Those days it was a wait for age contest, if I remember correctly. It was for a couple of years and then changed back to a handicap, and it's changed again now to a condensed handicap. And she was a completely different horse in a soft track. You know, she grew another leg when it rained. Very special, obviously, especially in one's first year of training. Well, it was an 11-year break before uh, Delta Form stepped up to the plate. He was a son of Marske and he came from the Western Cape and he won with Guillermo Figueroa, a, a very, very easy win. Delta Form was obviously a pretty good horse, well-bred. I think it's a New Zealand uh, pedigree, if I remember correctly. And he went on to win a Group 1 in America, so he showed his class. Uh, remiss of me not to have mentioned Record Edge because he was a, a son of a rather unfashionable stallion in sunny north, but... He had plenty of problems, but boy, oh boy, didn't lack heart. Yeah, he was good. And um, the fact that it was at Gosforth Park was um, to his advantage. If it was a turf and team, he probably wouldn't have run a place. But um, he just scraped home at Gosforth. And, you know, you give many people the question to answer this one, they wouldn't have come up with Carl Nisius. Yeah, well, he was riding quite a bit for me at the time, and it was actually a hell of a ride by him as well, well-timed. Golden Horde was another horse that uh, won this prestigious trophy. He was a soldier made of concrete. Yeah, he was a very good horse. Uh, it wasn't an expensive yearling, funny enough, um, and very versatile, 1,200 to 2,000. Gave me a lot of pleasure uh, training him. Then uh, another very tough horse, and a horse that uh, one of your best friends trained, and you took him to more heights, more great heights, in Ingleside. Yeah, Ingleside was also... Um, a hell of a character, nice an horse, and um, was left behind here for me to train when Pat went to Singapore. But uh, also very honest. Um, in fact, he may still even be running around somewhere at uh, in the town on the farm there. I think Bernard still, still looks after him, and uh, he'd be well in his in his twenties. I think Record Edges and Golden Horde are also out there. Or well, one of them's passed. It could be Record Edge, but I think Golden Horde's still running around on a farm in the town. And then, of course, the bull of a horse that was just incredible. He ended up going to Dubai. He ended up becoming a lead horse. The very, very tough son of Badgerland, Wolf Whistle. Yes, uh, yeah, for quite a, an illustrious partnership as well. Tough, as you say, and it was a hell of a, a duel between him and uh, oh, Yardarm. Yeah, it was very enjoyable to watch. Yeah, Pierce Stratham and Kevin Shea giving it all. Yeah, it was, uh, no, it was, that's, that's good hard racing. They're not giving an inch. Rudra, who won in an absolute common canter, given Kevin Shea another one in the Summer Cup. Rudra in the black cap, who hits the front with 300 metres left to go. Kevin Shea has bounced Rudra into the lead. He's shot two, three lengths clear. Senya Versace behind those. Princess Rod, Smart Bank is running on now. But it's Rudra, it's too late for the rest. Kevin Shea is looking around, and Rudra is going to take Summer Cup victory. Yeah, another horse that liked it soft, a really good... A great partnership. Unfortunately, two of those partners have passed on, but that was also a very memorable memorable day. Uh, in fact, I think the late Chris Gerber could have proposed to Bridget that day. I think there's, there's some connection, but yeah, that forever will be remembered. And then, quite possibly, the most sensational commentary and the most sensational performance from a filly that was drawn 20. She came from dead motherless last. She tore them apart, Illa de Vittoria. Yeah, that was a super win. Again, a filly that liked a bit of rain, funny enough. And if I remember correctly, it could have been her last start. From dead last to first is Illa de Vittoria. She draws away. She's tearing them apart in the Goma Goma Summer Cup. A superb win by Illa de Vittoria. She was a very special filly to train, that's for sure. I, one of the more pleasurable horses uh, I've trained in my, in my time in that she was a, a great character, a lot of personality, very intelligent. 
Mary will agree that it was, you know, as an owner to own a little filly like her. Albeit she could run second many, many times. The highs she gave us were just unbelievably high. Flirtation popped up for Costa Levanas. It's a commentary that I'm sure Nico Cruciotis, with his good sense of humour, will not remember with great fondness. Yeah, Nico didn't get the trip. She did. Um, but it was a... I mean, she was also a pretty, pretty decent filly in her day. She could be a little in and out. Um, but... There was also a big one. She beat Mother Russia at that time, which was a super filly. Just to skim briefly over the four winners that you've had, going back to Aslan in those very distinctive purple colours, to, to Liege, to Zilzal, and of course to Tilbury Fort in those very bright yellow colours. They're all special, I'm sure, to win Gauteng's premier race, pre premier handicap. Is there any one of those horses that, that really was particularly special to Sean Terry? Well, I think um, obviously Zilzal was a horse that we always thought very highly of and earmarked the race a long way out. And he had got there off a quiet victory moon run, yet um, we felt a beat of, of his chances. Tilbury Fort was a horse that was just doing well and he just came in at the right handicap, at the right time, almost perfect planning and um, things really going right. Um, you know, was he as good as the others? I'm not sure, but geez, did he did he give us a performance on the day? Um, Liege, I think, also had a, a quiet prep run going into the Victory Moon. Obviously, really appreciated the rain that we got, and Aslan also had a quiet run going into the Victory Moon. So, uh, you know, where I'm looking at. My horses have all had that, that type of prep where they've um, all needed their last runs just to bring them to the absolute peak. That's the way we've gone about it with, with the, the four of them this year. And um, I think there is a, a strong resemblance in the, in the preparation that my previous winners have had as to what these have done. So, yes, we can only hold thumbs. Well, to put the lid in it... Um there's an old expression that says, if it works, don't fix it. And you've never, ever had a very, very buoyant early part of November. But boy, oh boy, when the end of November comes, Team Terry has really been on song. Yeah, it's always a time of the year where we like to, um, you know, start producing the goods because you can only get them ready for so long. Then they've got to start delivering. Uh, sure, I've had a few bumps in the road this season and... Uh, I'm sure a few people could probably forgive me for having a, a quiet uh, start to November. However, I do believe things are in place and on track and yeah, we're ready to make progress.